Hey y'all, Wacky Wormer here with a new series for my channel. This is Modded Minecraft. I'm playing on Minecraft version 1.10.2, and I'm playing with the newly released Hermit Pack mod pack, which is available on the Curse and FTB launcher. This pack was developed mostly for the Hermitcraft guys and girls for their server play, their YouTube Let's Plays, and streams and stuff. And it just seemed like a good opportunity to get back into Minecraft. I've been out of Minecraft. Uh, at least haven't been playing it with any sort of regularity for the past year or so and I've never been a big vanilla player so the features of 1.10 are pretty new to me the features of the mod packs that have been up updated to 110 or the mods that have been updated to 110 are gonna be pretty new to me and I'm really excited to see what everything looks like now how it's changed and I'm sure it's gonna be awesome Speaking of mods in this mod pack, there's some pretty good ones. We've got, as far as tech mods go, we have Industrial Craft, which Industrial Craft was the first mod that I really took to in modded Minecraft when I started a few years ago. I really did enjoy it. It did have a few problems, at least at the time there was no native support for transferring items between different machines. That may have changed, I'm not sure. Uh, hopefully it has, but I mean, there's there's plenty of other transport options around, but you know, if, if a mod features machines, it's kind of nice to also feature the required components for automation, I feel like, so. Hopefully that's been added. If not, it's no big deal. We've got Ender.io and Mechanism, at the very least, for transport pipes. Uh, Ender.io is really awesome mod. It is a mod that I usually go to for my early game, ore doubling, RF production, stuff like that. And because of that, I'm actually going to stay away from it unless I need, you know, specific machines or items or something from it for the early game at least. Because I really want to focus on Mechanism. Mechanism is an excellent mod. It's got a very nice long progression system. It can take you from ore doubling in the early game all the way up to at least in 1710 it would take you all the way up to or quintupling and but it, it's it's definitely I mean any any or doubling or whatever is a little OP anyways but it it took so much materials so much system design and everything that uh, it's it's interesting you know it's not just plop this machine down and you have or quintupling you need a full system that's doing all kinds of chemical reactions harvesting renewable resources, long chain, solar panels, uh, all kinds of stuff. So it's it's a lot of fun and it's a mod that I've really just barely scratched the surface of in the past and I'm really interested to get into it and see everything it has to offer. I shared a base, the last time I played modded Minecraft I shared a base with a guy who did a good bit of mechanism stuff and I just kind of sat back and watched as he was throwing all of these machines and systems up and we had portals, teleporters, I don't even remember all the things that we had but it was it was absolutely insane. And I loved it and you know you see someone throwing all that up you, you kind of like okay well he's got that taken care of I should do something else but the whole time I was sitting there just like man I wish I could jump on into this this looks so cool. For the episode today, my priorities are to get a nice little hidey hole dug and then to get my Tinker's Construct workbenches crafted. Now, if you're new to Tinker's Construct, which probably means you're new to modded Minecraft in general, Tinker's Construct is a mod that adds modular tools, meaning that you can craft the individual components of a tool so let's take a pickaxe for example, you can craft a tool rod for the handle, you can craft a pickaxe head, and then you can craft a uh, binding, a binder, tool binder, I forget the exact name of it, but essentially you know what you use to attach the head to the, to the rod. You can craft all those out of separate materials, unlike vanilla Minecraft. And the benefit of that is that depending on the materials that you're using, you're going to get benefits. For example, let me think. I think iron now is, this is new to 110. I think it's iron adds a magnetization uh, trait to your tool. So if you have iron in a material, 
on your tool, then it's going to attract. I don't know if it's limited to like ores and stone or, or what all it's limited to, but it's going to actually pull those items towards you as you're mining and stuff. Which which has nice consequences or benefits to mining like over lava and things like that. It's just it's very convenient. There's other mods, there's like an auto smelter trait that you can add. You can add you can use redstone to add haste which is sort of equivalent to the, to the enchantments. You can use Lapis Lazuli to add fortune and looting. You can use diamonds and emeralds to increase durability. So there's tons and tons of materials that you can add to your tools that are going to give it cool new traits and stuff and just produce really awesome tools. In addition, it adds obsidian as a tool material it adds two new ores in the nether, cobalt and ardite, which are better than diamond. And then you can combine them for manulin, which is a pretty solid material too. So there's a bunch of really cool stuff, and it's, it's really awesome. We're not going to get that deep into it, but we will go ahead and construct some tools for sure. Maybe even a full set. It kind of depends. I'm looking right now, I would love to have a nice little flat area in front of some water, so I'm going to check out this little pond looking area uh, just north of me in the journey map. Or I guess north is relative, that would be, well, northwest, so fairly close. We're going to see what this has to offer. We've got some mobs here, I don't know if they're... Something in here adds owls. I don't even, I don't know if that's a Minecraft thing or if it's a, there's a mod in here that's doing it, but I've seen a couple owls. Uh, I think there's rabbits in here too, maybe? Not totally sure on that. I would love to get a hidey hole going in here somewhere, right next to some nice water, a good area for mining, but I don't really have a hillside to dig into. And I'd rather be on this side. Okay, so we're just going to dig a little hole into the ground right here. Where's the sun at? Okay, we got a little time. Let's go ahead and jump into Tinkers. So the first item from Tinkers we're going to make is a crafting station. Just take a crafting table, plop it in the grid, get a crafting station out. This guy is basically just an upgraded crafting table. Uh, has several additional features. Number one... When you close out of the GUI, items that are in the crafting grid stay on the table. That's pretty awesome, right? Number two, if you put a chest or even a furnace adjacent to the crafting station, you can access the contents of that chest or furnace from the crafting station. That's pretty awesome, right? And then there's some other things too. Uh, I'm trying to remember. Oh, uh, yeah, we'll get into this next one in a second. So let's go ahead and construct our Tinker's workbenches that we'll need to build the tools we want to build, right? So I'm going to need several planks. That's good. Let's go ahead and get in this uh, crafting station here. I'm going to need a few sticks. We're going to arrange the sticks in a crafting grid like so. I'm going to get 12 of these blank patterns. These are the patterns that are used in Tinkers to make stencils for the different tool parts that we're going to be making, right? So we've got the patterns, we've got logs, planks, we're going to need another crafting table, we're going to need another chest, and that should cover us. Okay, so I'm going to throw those patterns down here because we're going to use them in these crafting recipes. The first one we're going to build is a stencil table. Now a stencil table is what's going to take the remainder of these blank patterns and allow us to make patterns for the different tool components out of. So a pickaxe head pattern, a binding pattern, a tool rod pattern, etc. Right? Next we're going to take the log, get us a part builder. This is what's going to allow us to apply material to the pattern. So uh, we take a pickaxe head pattern, we throw some stone in there, we get a stone pickaxe head. Next we're going to take the chest item pattern and we get the pattern chest this is for storage not of the blank patterns these can just sit in the stencil table but the patterns that we've stenciled in uh, well the pattern for the tool components for it's going to hold all that and then finally the crafting table and the pattern gives us the tool station this is where we can repair 
and assemble the different tools that we're building. All right, so those are the four. <clears throat> I'm running out of daylight here. Stencil table, part builder. Actually, the chest goes in between those. Part builder, tool station. And then the final feature of this crafting station, which this is new to 110. If we put it down next, so we have this chain of five workbenches here. When we access the GUI for any one of these tables, we get a tab GUI here and we can access the inventories of each of these workbenches. So that's pretty awesome. I'm going to throw in the blank patterns in here. I'm going to get a pickaxe head pattern. I'm going to place it in our pattern chest over here. I'm going to get a tool rod pattern and I'm going to get a binding pattern. Now I'm going to jump over to the part builder. I'm going to throw some wood in for the material here and also new we don't have to actually drag these patterns over to fill this space. We just need to click it. It's there. Take that, take that, and then I need that. Okay. Uh, tool station, pickaxe, shift click everything up. Uh, we could have given it a name there, but not too worried about it right yet. We can also later on, once we start acquiring newer materials and stuff and we want to make improvements to our tools, we can actually do that. I don't know if. That functionality is native to Tinkers now. It used to be in a mod called Iguana Tweaks, which is a mod that your tools would gain experience and improve, like their mining speed, the mining level and stuff would improve, and then you could also swap components out. That functionality is here in this pack. I haven't checked to see if that's due to Iguana Tweaks or if that's actually native to Tinkers at this point or not. But it definitely should be, at least the swapping components. But you can see I'm gaining experience in this pickaxe here. And it is improving. It is improving in the sense that, uh, let's see, mining speed 2, attack 3. I think I think the mining speed and the attack is going to go up. I know for sure the modifiers is going to go up. Um, possibly the other things too. Not 100% sure, but I think so try to grab these before anything attacks me. Alright. Come down here. Hope this isn't too dark for y'all. I think it's okay. I'm going to throw down the crafting station real quick. I'm going to get a furnace made so we can get some light in here. I'm going to do I have sticks. Yes, I have sticks. Craft up that. And then I'm going to temporarily plug this hole right here. And if we look here at the crafting station inventory, we can see uh, the inventory slots for the furnace. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, looks like we can't actually swap things out though. That's interesting. Oh, there it goes. Okay. So they, they definitely could have done a better job with labeling which slot goes where. I'm not sure why. You know, it's just three slots in a row and you kind of have to memorize which goes where, but it is what it is. It's pretty cool though. So I like it. And Tinkers is definitely something I would recommend for early game tool creation and everything just because it's it's so much simpler or it's not simpler than vanilla tools but using the tools I guess is simpler just because it's easier to repair them without an anvil or anything it's 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 just better more convenient so anyways that's episode one if you liked it give me a thumbs up if you have comments feedback criticism whatever leave it in the comment section below i'm still new to this i'm still trying to find my style and everything so i really appreciate any feedback i can get from y'all and with all that being said i will see y'all in episode two